Hey there, and welcome back to Trainwreck, an educational monster train series where you watch me struggle at around 200 pack shards. Nothing too crazy to report today. It's still the Independence Day slash July 4th quote unquote extended weekend for me. It's a good opportunity to redo recordings because I'm not working on a couple days this week, but I tell you what, there's something very i don't know i don't love hearing random fireworks outside i mentioned this a little bit in my previous train wreck episode because well i'm i was recording train wreck over this weekend and so it's immediately relevant to me but i think the focus of that discussion in general was just participation in fireworks in this particular case i just want to talk for a moment about man it's stressful hearing explosions and you're just like oh god what's happening i mean i live in a safe neighborhood so this is not really normally a concern but it's a state where you're allowed to have fireworks so of course people bust these things out and they launch them and you can hear them from very far away and it stresses out the animals my poor cats get low and get terrified over it and it's frankly stresses out me too so i don't know not a huge fan i think i could live without that kind of nonsense uh, it's very it's very strange to me that this became such a popular thing for people right i don't understand the draw to self-harm i mean i think the the hope is that ooh, it's a cool explosion that i get to do and it's fun and great but people disrespect it and they have i don't know it just seems crazy to me right i feel like there are so many things that can award people darwin awards that are legal that blow my mind i was reading an article the other day about kids in new york city who were subway surfing Apparently what they do is they hop on the subway roofs and then surf them like surfboards. They stand up and try to surf them. And so if they lose their balance or whatever, they just go tumbling and get run over and a variety of other horrible things. A bunch of 14 year olds are just found dead from this every year and it's just mind-boggling to me that you would go you know what i want to do with my free time i'm going to jump on this subway and try to surf it what are you doing i did some dumb stuff as a kid but nothing to that extent i think the most i would have risked as a child from doing dumb stuff probably would have been a broken arm or something like and that would suck okay i would not have been happy with it but i'm not putting my life at risk good grief it's like the stakes are just so much higher these days people are just like all right well i gotta get my high off of something may as well jump on this train and let's go Whew. anyway i'm done talking about that let's play monster train so our previous run was little fade it was a good run. It was an opening votive key, which was nuts, and it allowed me to kind of streamline everything else along the way. We had paraffin enforcers infused with drafts, going all in on defense, a lot of daze angles and intrinsic unnamed tomes in order to solve things like patient or divinity damage. But there was a last minute stealth pickup that I took engulfed in smoke at ring seven that did a lot of work. So yeah, it was a good run. There's really not much else to say besides that. I think it was otherwise very solid. Votive key opener on Fade is usually pretty nuts. Yeah, there's really not much else to add there. I recently got questions where people are just mind blown that I think Echo Raid is as bad as I do. And I think the thing is just that Echo Raid doesn't solve the problems that a Wormkin run needs solved. I think it would be a much better unit if it were one space and had the same abilities, but it's just got a very bizarre setup, right? Shellsmith is not a very good tank, but it's also AoE tanking. But I would also just rather have a Steelworker in like almost 100% of cases. So I really don't think that Shellsmith adds much to it. I think Repeater is a massive risk in the early game. He's just a 25-5, right? He's just a 25-5. That's very weak. And you have to protect him. So you're protecting him with, what, a train steward? And ultimately, you have to start with powerful consume cards or he's not viable. I think Marshlord, despite being my least favorite path, 
is the strongest path because it's just all front loaded, very effective, good tanking, overflow your floor, etc. It's a weird champion. Anyway, let's get in on this. As always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I've somehow spent five minutes talking so far, so let's let's play some Monster Train, shall we? Let's do it. Reminder to self, this is a train wreck episode, which is probably going to result in this being an actual train wreck. <laughs> I hadn't actually considered that I was talking about subway trains in a game that we're playing Monster Train. That's funnier than I thought it would be. Eh, anyway, let's get in on this. I hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing just peachy. Yeah, nothing really to add besides the fireworks stuff we already talked about. So yeah, we are Exile Wormkin Default Stygian. We're facing Days Talos, Spell Shield Fell, and Chased Seraph today. Okay, sure, why not? Proclamation, Crypt Builder, Force Contamination. A lot of front-loaded damage here, right? Proclamation is great. Crypt Builder is similarly great. I don't have any discards, so Crypt Builder is less great, I suppose, but I might draft into some. Force Contamination is also good. A lot of extracts here. We're going to be needing a lot of purples to support this, but we'll see. They're not bad cards. They're just not great cards. They don't give you a lot of direction. They're just good stuff, right? Today, our temples are on... Two, four, six, seven, eight, five temples is excellent. We have the removal dupe magic side on eight, which is nice. Magic and steel on seven. The magic side is better. A mediocre dupe on six with nothing remarkable. There's a good magic shop there, though. We do have money trinket shop on five, which is useful. There's no removals on five. Steel shop competes. Pretty good one. It's got relic and an event. Another removal dupe on four with a Stygian banner. I mean, if I can use that, that's pretty hype. Interesting, interesting. Where are my steals here? No steal on four. No steal on six. Do I get a double? Then I do get a double. Cool. A double with a Stygian banner on two and a Wormkin banner on three. All right, fair enough. If I have a good holdover target or something, I could go Magic Shop Wormkin banner on two as well. It's hard to say what I'm looking for here. It's going to depend a lot on like what Echo Right I see and things like that. But Cuddlebeard is better than Faulty Loader, even if I have no benefit from it right now. So we'll click it. Dark Forge says, today it shall be a Marsh Lord run. I have no consume cards. I think taking Repeater here is dumb. I have I've had people argue with me, telling me in this past week that I should be more open to taking Repeater here. I think... The truth is, I think maybe 200 shard runs have shied me away from this a little bit. This gamble might make more sense at 100 shards because I think you can skate a little stronger, right? You can just kill some dudes with Crypt Builders and Proclamations and stuff, maybe get to ring two. And then it, once you're at ring two, after having taken no shards, you can decide if you need to take shards or if you have the consume cards, if you can lean into this. Because I do re agree, repeater three is strong if you get there. But Repeater 1 is mediocre, and Repeater 2 is not worth the upgrade. So you need to be starting Repeater or splashing it later. I think starting it and not having this opener for it is very risky. Anyway, I'm going to click Martial Art because I just frankly think it's better. We could take this Horde here. Sketches Wormkin. Double Wormkin banners. There's a removal dupe on four with a Stygian banner. I do see two temples before then. Sketches. Ugh, sketches Wormkin it is. All right. There was a refracting lens in there that's also nuts, but we have the tools to deal with these Mark of Invasions, so I'm going to click them. I can rely on Marsh Lord for a lot of carry here as well. We just drop the guy in, pop some losers up here. I will ping middle so I don't lose nearly so many guys. And then I will save. I'll leave it alone upstairs. Cool. Like that mark of invasion does cause me some issue here, for sure. It hurts. Take money. Money. Good. I wish to also ping out the 5 1 on middle. Important. Okay. We're going to leak some stuff. I also. It's fine. Hold. I could potentially not leak this.
it's probably correct to not leak that. That was seven damage. I thought about it and decided I think it's better to not give that up. I want to hatch this egg before Relentless. We at least take two. I'm fine with taking two. My Relentless floor is not the big angle here. It's not adding a lot. I'll hit this guy for 50 on bottom. I'll do five to him with that back line. We pop the egg, so I think we win this no problem. Cool. We got through it. Good job. All right, fair enough. I took two damage on the combat, got everything, so that's good. We love to see it. Purple Echo Infusion. We'll take it. Hard to say no to this. True. True, true, true. Let's take that. Purple Flash Freeze. Hey, it's Frostbite. We took Frostbite thing, so I'm going to click Frostbite card. Good job. Go team. Let's double Wormkin banner here. I think so. I think we want to look for it. Yes. Holdover is also functional here. I did I, because I saw this Echo Infusion, right? So that was a big part of what I was considering. Ooh, and a Spell Chain. Spicy. Ugh, Glug Cider. I mean, the truth is Glug Cider is not terrible here, but I think you need to click, click the Shard Soul Carver. There's just no way around it. The Shard Soul Carver is better. The reasons are, right? If I go to this next Wormkin banner and I just get a bunch of trash, Glug Cider doesn't win me the run. Shard Soul Carver does. So, sorry Glug, you're a little too early for my sketches Wormkin run. They keep doing this because they're like, hey, wait. You like Glug Cider and Sketches runs. Here you go. Whoops. It's okay. I am going to hold over Spell Chain. This Echo Infusion, almost certainly. It seems good. This is a train wreck episode. Let's Tenon Piercing the Flash Freeze, which is nuts, I think. This is very strong for backline management. Spell chain is hard to skip on this Echo Infusion. It's just really great. That's double Inspire triggers, which is huge. I also think we need to aggressively pare down. I don't think I need to actually remove here, do I? If I draw, if I hit all four train stewards on sketches, I can just play the Shard Soul Carver with Marsh Lord, and it's fine. All right, that's fine. Instead, what I'm going to do is buy this minus one into something useful. Which is what? Minus one echo break? Sure. I'm not gonna plus 10 that because I wanna save my money for the steel shop. So let's move on here. I'm not doing an infusion on this particular floor. No, moving on, okay. I'm feeling good already. We'll take this unit draft, of course. This is gonna pose some measure of threat, but I think it'll be fine. Yeah, see, we actually got him on that floor, which is no problem. I will ping out Big Scary Man on bottom. Ping there. I will ping middle for the infusion. It's correct. True. I will continue pinging middle here. Okay. Looking for pings. Looking for pings. Pings we're getting. Great work. I am going to pop this loser. He's gone. Great work. <laughs> this eight damage sweeper just kills everything here, which is depressing, but funny. <laughs> Hilarious. Anyway, I am just going to win on middle. I'm reasonably certain. Seems good to me. Cool. Now, I don't think there's any way that I can lose here if I keep playing... The power of Echo Infusion. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fine, right? We're good. We're golden. This guy just beats face. He's basically stronger Demon Fiend when you start loading him up like that, which is excellent. A purple hosting kin is a lot of value. Bounding Echoes is not bad, but I don't have anything I really want to hit that badly. I already have a better Echo Infusion. Let's take this hosting kin. That's good. Energy Siphon. Sadly, it's not purple offering token, or I would take that. I still take I still take this offering token because of the Crypt Builders, though, so fair enough. Siren of the Sea, is that good enough? 
I don't think so. It's not bad, but it's not good. I'm going to skip that. Yeah, I'm going to skip that. Fine. No problems. We're going to go left here. I need to kind of follow the path. Give me a multi-strike. <laughs> Yo, absolutely. I should look at this Wormkin banner first. Yeah, I mean, what we do is we are going to self-infuse Shard Soul Carver and go absolutely mad with power here. Excellent. Wonderful. I go ahead and take the Shard Soul Carver multi-strike here. Am I going to re-roll and look for quick, or am I happy with this runestone? We can re-roll. Endless? No. I'm going to take the money at least. We should upgrade this because I might get an overflow. So I am going to take the plus 25. Yeah, it's fine. This is fine. I don't need to go too fancy here. I need to plan for a possible overflow, which we don't see. I can be a little aggro on my health here. Wow. Ardenthal is good. I'll take it. For 25 health, that's a little spicy. But it's fine. I do think we cut a train steward here. Yes. Okay. This means guaranteed we get one guy on floor. Maybe two. All right. I think we win this combat at least. The hardened hall is useful for Marsh Lord either way. Cool. We actually get Big Carver Echo right upstairs, which is kind of sick. So that's cool. I will ping upstairs. I'm going to drop. I'm actually going to kill this 7x2 downstairs. Yeah. All right. Hatch that egg. Great work. Okay. Mid floor is not important right now. If I do Frozen Lands, Ping Ping, I get, it's what, two, three, I can make it work. I think that is important to do. Get rid of the big nine by two in the back. Remember, I took 25 fire damage for this hardened hull, so I better be able to make it functional. Is basically where we're at. I had better be able to figure this out. Let's pop the guy downstairs because I'm afeard of him. To do 50 in mid floor, and I think that cleans it up a bit. Yes. Okay. Feeling better about that floor now. We are just going to keep doing big scaling on top. I'm going to punch the bottom fellow with that Crypt Builder. Excellent. I think it's correct to hang out some of these guys on middle. Yes. This prevents these floors from overstacking in an unfortunate way, which I think does matter. Let's, we inspire upstairs. I don't think there's anything else fancy to say. We don't win on middle. I'm okay with that. We don't need to win on middle. In fact, I would prefer not. So, I can make this a pretty spicy hit. 176, he does a great job actually. Doing that much damage on mid floor, we easy win upstairs. I don't have to even click cards. Good, great, cool. We get through the combat after getting hardened hull, which is important. Ancient synergy is likely to be very powerful on this run. Eternal kinstone is as well, but it's not purple, so I think the ancient synergy matters. Oh, Titan Sentry. The problem is Titan Sentry is basically unplayable with sketches, right? At least the way I'm going. Yeah, at least the way I'm going. Sorry, Shark. The only benefit I get out of Cuddlebeard this run is going to be Flash Freeze, and that will just have to be it. Sad. Yes, it's true. Gold Kalia? Oh, man, they're really showing it to me. It's okay. It's okay. We're fine. We're fine. Card draw. We're fine. Stay the course. We go left. I get infusion action. One carver into other carver. 
incredible. This is this is what we like to see. I then duplicate that carver immediately. Yes. I then remove a train steward to guarantee that I can set up the floor the way I want. Good. Good. And I'm probably cutting a crypt builder here because it's not purple or particularly good otherwise. The plus 30. Well, that's tough. The tenon piercing, I think I want to put into this ancient synergy. I do need to take these upgrades. I need to stay ahead on shards. I'm going to put this proclamation a plus 30. I think that's worth it. We are going to upgrade Marsh Lord all Zive. I have. I guess I could get use the repeater for hosting kin spam. It's not bad. I suppose. I think it's better having the lad actually do some damage upstairs, though, right? Let's go Marsh Lord 2. I think this is going to be better. There's obviously some competition, but because Inspires want to go middle, whereas Echoes want to go up top. Multi Strike. This is a great way to die, I think. It's a lot of incoming damage. We're not that strong yet. My next dupe is on ring six, which I am going for. And we skip that relic. It's just wise. It's just a good business, is what we'll say. Just good business. I'm going to blast the guy downstairs, and then I think we are self-pinging middle. I mean, it's got to be correct to just keep spamming mid-floor. I don't see any reason not to do that, right? I'm going to not play the extra copy so I can get the money here. I think that's correct. And then... 40 upstairs will finish this guy. I don't need the force contamination. Okay. All right. Seems fine. Good. We just do all the other things that we want to do. I blast this goon, I think. And then we hit him, hit him, hit him. I come upstairs and I shoot this guy, which we get purples, which is good. I shot him upstairs because I would like this egg to hatch sometime this century. So there's that. Ooh, Crypt Builder. That's a good hit. Just send it. It's just, it's tough because I would like to spend my Inspires on this floor because they're so efficient. Right? They're incredibly efficient punt this loser back. It's alright. I don't actually mind if this guy lives with eight or whatever the heck. We have a lot of health. And we actually, we didn't roll into curses incredibly. Or not curses is what I'm thinking, not what I'm thinking of, but the conduits. Conduits would have been tricky here. But we're actually super fine because I have scaling health and everything. So we're golden, in fact. This guy takes 512 from that first hit. That's amazing. Ancient Residence? That's pretty good. It's a pretty good card. We're starting to get in the territory where things are a bit expensive, but... It's a good one to take. I'll take it. I think having the AoE is valuable. Glacial Seal. Glacial Seal Cuddlebeard. Oh my gosh. I can't click it. Oh no, I skipped the card. Trinket Shop or Steel Shop? What's the steel doing for me? Answer is very little. You could overstack here. I think the chance of overstacking is strong. The chance of Karuska is also pretty nuts, though. Let's go left. There's money here. I have enough cash to do like a quick reroll on this. So maybe we hit Karuska and go crazy. We'll spin that, see what we see. Ah, eh, it's all garbage. It could have been good. It could have been bad. Who can say? 
Raider's Quill, Mind Horde. I don't see that providing any value. First Help Act. There's only a few targets that can even be valid here. I'm just going to take the Traitor's Quill, I guess. That's fine. It seems more useful than the alternatives. Well, kind of Garbo. It could have certainly been better. Oh, well. We tried. Watch, I missed Thunderstone or something on this path. It's hard to know. I mean, at least this way there was a, there was a chance. I should be able to get through this. Hidden Assault. The thing is, is I'm going to have to rely on top floor in order to actually kill some of these big spicy guys that have two stealth. But that should be okay. Not super worried about it. Especially if I keep high rolling into the Echo Infusion on turn one. That's a pretty good feel. I could just shoot my own guy upstairs. I kind of don't want to push this egg to the back. It's a tough call, actually. Oh, I can kill one of them because of the Traitor's Quill. That's worth it, then. Okay. I was thinking about how to approach that, but I do think that's correct. All right, we load him up. I do think that it's good to do. Make purple cards, right? I mean, play purples is really all it comes down to. A lot of incoming damage, but I do have a lot of scaling, so I think we'll be okay. Yeah, as long as we play Mr. Echo Infusion every turn, we're going to be fine. It would be nice to not eat dirt. I am kind of eating dirt, actually. If I ping twice, I think this looks a lot better. Yeah, it does. Because the 60 kills in front and then kills, and then we get some damage through. So that should be fine. We have at least 40 up top. I might leak a little here, and I'll have to be okay with that. Actually, I get the kill, incredibly. Spicy. A lot of upgraded guys. Oof. This is going to cost me some health. All right, dang. Hidden Assault causing me problems here. I could save this egg. I can, I should. Well, I'm taking 25 damage here. I did not expect to eat this much damage dirt play the ancient synergy upstairs straight up i cannot afford to lot to like have that problem woof good grief i'm at least holding over a card fine yikes well we avoid dying that almost got really nasty i'm a little surprised at how spicy this is Oof, it's close. We almost lose this combat. This is 130 shards. This normally is such a powerful line, but I guess I haven't infused enough. Or I didn't have enough supporting cards. I ate 25 and that looked super spicy. Anyway, I'm clicking on Return Soul because it's purple and also a Return Soul. But, dang. I'm going to click on Drain. I think I'm going to need this. For obvious reasons. I have to go to the right for the dupe. Yes, we're going to look in the caverns first. Maybe I get the overflow here. I do not. So I'm going to take the Heaven's Gold instead. There was that X cost card I skipped on first Hell Pact. It's all right. I think it's fine. We're going to make third Shard Soul Carver. I'm going to take this minus two in the Ancient Synergy. I'm pretty confident that's a 100% click. You could put it on Ancient Resonance in order to make maybe see a holdover on this, which is pretty spicy. That's probably actually better. Or my magic shops. I do see a magic shop and a magic shop here, so I think I'm going to look for the holdover on Ancient Resonance, and that's very nice. The Purge is going into the other Proclamation, I think. I get one more dupe. I have plenty of extra shards to go through. We're fine. If I whiff on 
third carver middle. I'm just gonna again play it with Marsh Lord and we chill. So nothing fancy there. That was a scary ring five. Is this which fell is this? This is spell shield. Okay. I was gonna say if this is rage fell, we might just eat dirt. But we're actually okay. Play purple cards. Incredible. Keep clicking purple cards. We love to do it. Great job. This is gonna scale fast because we have a third friend now, which is great news. All right, so we then ping a guy, no problem. Magic shops really are the right angle here, yeah. There's not a lot of, not a lot else to say, I don't think. Blast this loser. Lay everything else. Save the 30, I think, is fine. Okay, I'll take that. Sure. Keep scaling. It's good. Haha, <laughs> just high roll crypt builder. It's great news. Return soul on. Wait for it. The offering token. We just keep going for it. Perfect. Big fan. Send it. Good. Kills this guy. This pushes damage through. Which is good damage. <laughs> it pushes him over the point where I the armor cost me damage on Fell. Still worth getting that scaling though, so no real argument here. Minus ones are gonna be really valuable at this point. Card draw is great, but I'm not playing every card I'm hitting is a major problem right now. Yeah, I'm not playing all my cards, which is the first issue. You see this issue? So I need to either take Ember here or plan on going to two, two magic shops. And I think it's gonna be two magic shops is the angle here. That's just my thought process on this. Kill that back, dude. Absolutely. I'll just stop six damage coming in. I'm pushing 700 through, so I feel pretty good about that turn. Yeah. I think we easy win by doing that. Cool. I'm going to play a card. I'm going to return soul and then probably burn one of those frozen lances. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. We definitely win. I have a lot of health here. No problems. A lot of health, a lot of damage. Seems good to me. A lot of pings. Great. And we finish with a 200 damage pop. Cool. She gets one round and then dies. That's excellent. That's good. Okay, I think we have the tools here. Hey, you know what? I'm going to click on Accelerated Incubation because it actually means I might pop out this guy's egg. Deep Offering is... Hard to play because I don't have the ember for it. Accelerate Incubation is nice. I think we take draw and go to every magic shop. Full stop. And that's my story. We're going to cut Train Steward here. This gets me to four units to guarantee play. I can do the last removal next floor. So here I'm going to cut something expensive, probably. Give me a minus two. Yes, minus two in ancient synergy is huge. Just keep showing me these minus twos and I'm gonna feel great about them. Okay, five minus ones into things. We're gonna make every echo break cost zero, if at all possible. I want a 20 consume every frozen lance here, if possible. Stack stone is nice, right? I could have stack stoned a minus two drain. Yeah, I'll make drain sap six. That will add up. Reroll this. Permafrost, not seeing it. Nah. 20 consume, absolutely. These magic shops are huge value for me. I'm going to save the drain slot for a possible minus two. And instead, this minus one goes into... Let's put on flash freeze, then. 
Yes. I do get 15 shards from a removal or from the last dupe, but I think I think I'm just going to remove this train steward now. It's it's not adding any value, any real value anyway. I'm going to take this purge into this crypt builder. Yeah, I think so. I'm okay with that. We'll upgrade Mr. Marshlord to Marshlord 3. I made this decision specifically so that I could have Big Man upstairs. That's why I have the... What is it called? That's why I have the Accelerated Incubation, which represents a lot of value for him. It's a good mid-floor, huh? That feels good. I think this is solid. Yes. Feeling good about that. Ping the guy in the back here. I think that's okay. I would like to do Frozen Lands, Frozen Lands, and then Ancient Resonance downstairs because it it opens up this floor. And I'm a little concerned about this 290 in the back here, which I think is a fair concern. That's six shell removed. Incredible. I did hit this Ancient Synergy, which I think is amazing. I'm going to get the Collector here because you can't stop me. And I'm also going to hatch my guy upstairs. Having the egg open, very helpful. Okay, we're going to eat a lot of damage here. Is pretty much the only thing I can say. I'd like to avoid perishing. I somehow managed that, which is incredible. Go team. Just do our best here. Wow, we actually killed the floor. I think we are going to lose our guy. But wait, I kick him to the back. We are genius. And then we start loading up this guy. Honestly, that was like super big brain play. And then we Ancient Resonance here, clearing out a bunch of that damage. Excellent. I can get it to four? No, I can't get the kill I want. I think playing more Frozen Lances and other cards and burning them is the way to go. Yeah, it's good. To, you really want to inspire this floor every turn, pretty much. There's just no way around it. We actually clear everything because we are incredible at the video game, as it turns out. Just hit is my Im immortal motto. Just hit. Terrifying. I might be able to kill this guy in back if I play in the correct order. That's a genius tier play. And then we're going to keep the Echo Infusion, of course. It's a lot of damage, but we're okay. Yeah, we're okay because I generate a lot of everything here. I think it is worth it to ping, ping, and then clear these front enemies here and then take the force contamination on the boss. This will help. Yeah, I think this actually helps a ton. The proclamation. I'm going to return soul on that proclamation, actually. Which I think is a huge swing. And lets me play every single card here. Excellent. So one slap and then crumble. Excellent work. I'm feeling much better about this run from our current position. Soul Cripple, nope, not today. I'll take another drain. Yeah, sure. I'll take I'll have two of those in my run. That seems okay. We're going left 100 percent I immediately get last guy. Incredible. The full sketches is now activated. We love to see it. If I see Karuska, I'm feeling great. Echo Seedling. That's either... What? Something coming out of Return Soul, Hosting Kin, or Accelerated Incubation, which is not bad. If I do that with Bog Slime, that's pretty huge. Oh, I guess it could also be one of these Frozen Lances. Frankly, I don't actually mind. Let's look for the minus two real quick. I mentioned this. Yo, just hit. Just hit. Wow. 
Wow, 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 wow. Very, very good. Crazy. I feel very strong here. I think we are going to purchase the doubles here. Bog Slime, Echo Seedling. I'm going to re-roll this because Karuska is huge. Base Charge activates after Sketches, which is just two free Inspires to my whole floor, which is outrageous. I'm not even worried about Heaven's Goal. I, I've got the hits here. We're going to cut cards. I don't really see a reason not to here. Yeah, I'll drop two Frozen Lances on this, I think. May as well. Yeah, may as well. I will minus one something. I cannot afford to minus one anything else, but I'm okay with that, honestly. I could remove, but I actually think our removal situation, we're okay. Those three relics were big hits. I think this is very clean. 225 out of 100. Let's go. I think we beat Chase no problem. I think we have all the tools we want. And we should be okay. Yeah, that mid floor looks... Oh, baby. That base charge hit. Let's go. All right. Looking pretty solid here. I am going to send the hosting kit. This is good, because this hits everything. That's my Echo Seedling here, which is massive scaling. It's double Inspires for each hit, which is huge. I get the Frozen Lance as well. We really just load this up and then hit him with the Force Contamination immediately, and he takes 800 damage there. Excellent work. Now, we could eat dirt here, but we have the power of Ancient Resonance. Amazing. Well done. I just kind of load this up. I am going to Proclamation away the guy downstairs. I think that's wise. And then I think we kill both of these enemies and we chill. Right? Seems good to me. Inspire up middle. I did give up two Echoes there, but I'm okay with that, right? Not a problem. Once we actually hit the accelerated incubation, we'll be able to do some fancy stuff. But for now, I am going to stop some of this damage coming in upstairs. It's worth the double inspires to do the return souls on those. What can I echo transfer back and away? I will do that somewhere. Let's just pop this guy, right? Yeah, pew. Seems good to me. I think the play is you return soul back one of these echo breaks. There's really nothing. I mean, I take eight damage for it, but it's okay because it also triggers double inspires here. And I am going to, I think, just dump 170 into the boss there. And what am I drawing into? Hard to say. Let's avoid some of this damage from the back in case we get blasted a bit. We could get blasted. First play is Accelerate Incubation. Just freely pops out the guy upstairs. He's set. Play the cards we know we need to play. Draw a pass. That's a good drain. I'm going to kill a guy. Kill a guy. And then drain this damage down a lot. I'm okay with taking 18. It saves a ton. Should be good. It's a very powerful turn coming up. We just popped some guys. I'm going to be draining the front so I don't take this Ember Drain here. 100%. Yes. I'm going to be draining the front. We're going to go ping, ping, Ancient Resonance. We'll force contamination the boss, and then I'm going to drain in front, and we're golden. Yeah, our, our deck is doing a great job of answering the challenges of the run. I think there's very little to say that we could have improved here. I could pop. I'm going to pop this scary guy on this next floor, actually. He scares me more than other stuff and i can just double ping these guys these little goons out with this echo break which is good for me so i'm fine with that 
This is chased, so I don't really care all that much about draining him. The drains are mostly for the divinity, but we could potentially drain on him now and get away with it. I'm going to be draining Mr. Pyrowings for sure here. That is definitely happening. He does not get to swing on me. I think the scaling is the most important thing I could be doing here, so that's just going to happen. Yep, that is just going to happen here. I don't really see this force contamination doing anything for me, so it's fine. Sure. Phew. We actually do some damage upstairs. Great work. All right, now any drains into the boss are free real estate here, which is worth keeping in mind. We at least pop all the back lines, which is great. Big fan. This 10 frostbite is permanent at this point. Force contamination the boss, 100%. We should just keep purple. Keep purple going on middle, 100%. We win. Uh, there's no way he gets through... Yeah, he can't get through this much health. There is just no way. Let's click this drain, actually. It saves a lot, and then we return soul on that drain, actually. And that's how we finish our turn, which is pretty neat, as it turns out. He actually does, like, almost nothing to me. It's just the one hit. Actually, he does nothing. It's the one hit from the front, and then he does zero. So we're, we're looking pretty good here. I think this is going to look similar for Divinity. Blank Pages is fun here. Yeah, sure, why not? I will probably get trashed in my deck, but I'll be able to... I'll have a bottom floor and a top floor I can throw them away at, probably. I imagine we're going to lose Echo Right because I can't really imagine how he lives. Like, what, what is he doing, right? Here you go. Echo Right comes upstairs and goes, Hi, I'm, I exist. Welp. That's, that's my story. That's what I'm telling you. Be frozen Lance. I realize it's not the ideal hit for that, but it's still worth it. I do want to Echo Break. I'm going to return Soul back the Echo Break because these consumes are high value. And we drain the boss down a bit. Good, we're doing like 500 damage on turn one and have already neutered his offense. Trample Penumbra, literally unplayable. We at least get the Accelerate Incubation on a good turn upstairs, which is great. The literally unplayable champion. I, You know what? I underestimated this game. The game decided I wasn't allowed to do the thing I wanted to do. I'm going to stop all that damage. That's good. I'm going to kill that guy. And I'm also going to kill this guy in the back. I think it's good. Mr. Penumbra is banned. I was, I was talking about, like, yeah, what could go wrong with blank pages? Just give me trample penumbra, like, five times. Yeah, sure. Harvest Rector, I mean, he's just going to die on bottom floor. That's not ideal, right? That's not, not exactly how I would like that turn to go. If you want my honest opinion. I do think this proclamation is good. I will draw a card upstairs, see what we hit. A pretty good Ancient Resonance. If I pop in the back, I actually get two here, which is great. So you play, here you go, play Rector. And then we get double kills, and he lives. Like an absolute incredible lad. And then we send it on middle for an extra 200 or so. We've at least got extra random worm upstairs that's trying his best. Tethys! Tethys! Oh no, she died! Who could have foreseen this? Tethys! <laughs> oh man, that's rough. That is 100% rough. Alright, goodbye, Rector. You, you tried, I guess. It's fine. We'll draw cards. Hey, that's a good hit. Ancient Synergy. Just kill a loser. Do this big drain. Maybe we double hit. We don't. It's fine. We're good. This is, I think we have 100% stabilized in a very fashionable way. This guy I'm back, by the way, has like 200 health. I don't even want to think about it. I'm going to kill this other guy, though. Push that damage directly through. This guy has so much life. Hey there, Penumbra. How's it going? Thanks for showing up again. 
Really glad you're in my deck. You're, you're exactly what I was looking for from blank pages. Too bad I can't sentient cultivate the worm. I mean, I'll play sentient. She has a draw relic and she basically can't die. So that seems good. For the record, Ancient Resonance saves the run here, which is great. I'm going to kill Flash Freeze downstairs, burn that fun friend out. Ancient Resonance for sure does huge work here. Do a million damage. I'm going to return soul here. Honestly, on the Force Contamination, I think. That's a lot of damage. We do 2,000 to the boss here, which is great. I do lose some Ember for that, which is a shame. Hey, here you go. Immediate payout. We have Little Fade Eternal Flame. Let's go. Let's go. Draw a card. Okay, so we are going to lose next turn. I did not happen to hit one of my drains here, which would have stopped Mr. Pyre Wings. So that's sad, I'll say. This is a piercing attack. So I'm actually going to work on bottom floor with that. And then we're going to spread out these pops a little bit. Man, we come close. I could have done it too, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. Eh, I don't know. We actually win the run. What am I even worried about? I was here. I was talking about, ah, man, we're going to lose my next turn. It's fine. I actually just win on that turn. Never even, never mind. Thanks, thanks, Hef. Blank pages, you gave me Trample Penumbra. Of all of the champions that you could have given me, they just, they were like, hey, you want the one that you literally can't play? Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Monster Train, very cool. It's all right, we get the W on this run either way. I think it was very secure and Blank pages was fun. I, and in the end, I actually think Blank pages probably was a net negative because I got Trample Penumbra so early, but it's fine. We were ahead enough that it did not matter. I didn't even hit the highest of high rolls here, right? The Karuska would have been the nuts. If I had hit Karuska, this Echo Infusion goes mad with power. But seriously, the Self-Infused Shard Soul Carver with Multi-Strike and a plus 25, and then you also have Base Charge and a whole bunch of Wormkin Relics with the sketches. I mean, this is, this is Shard Soul sketches, right? This is the sketches of Carver sketches of shard souls there's there's a title of an episode in there somewhere i haven't decided what it is meanwhile marsh lord did great just chilling upstairs i throw an accelerate incubation at him and then period and then randomly you get a big worm and then that big worm just does okay it's basically trample penumbra if you think about it hard enough and squint a little so that's pretty cool this is the trample penumbra that's actually playable incredible thank you mr Shiny Shoe for your excellent balancing of Penumbra. The other big call out I want to say is just all the minus twos we were shown were pretty much exactly what I wanted. They helped so much with the playability of a bunch of these cards. There were three of them. They're awesome. The double magic shops at the end were huge value. Excellent work there. I also think the real call out here, I mean, Ancient Resonance saved so much damage. This was such a good pickup. I didn't even see the holdover for it. It was so strong to have this. I could have maybe not bought one of these relics on ring eight and then re-rolled that magic shop and looked for holdover, but those relics were strong enough. The combo of bog slime, echo seedling, and base charge that I really had no worries. I was thinking to myself, those are great. Those are exactly what I want. I don't need to find the holdover. So I didn't even bother looking. But yeah, Drain was excellent. Basically neutered the bosses to some extent. Chase was dead either way, but the Divinity would have punched my front guy for sure. We would have taken for sure, for sure some big damage there. It also, Drain actually mattered as well for Ember Wings, Pyre Wings, whatever they're called. The guys that give you Ember Drain. So those ones you have to watch out for when you have a Sketches line. They can just disable your turns, so... Otherwise, though, I mean, this is probably my favorite kind of worm can run, run. Just click on sketches, make big units, and make a bunch of them. 
It's very compelling, very strong, very fun. It's also, you know what? You don't see it enough, right? I've, you know, I've seen it actually a few times on the channel. They even showed me a glug cider here today too. Was well, I'm glad I didn't click it, but at the same time, you know, this is good. We've seen it a few times on the channel. It's very effective. I'm glad to demo it. It's not actually that common. It's kind of weird to see it this often. So that's probably going to turn away and we're going to have some dumb echo right runs going forward, but I'll take the win if they show it. So fair enough. Anyway, I'll let you go there. So, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like or a dislike if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.